Warpugs, L is for Lamentations, and if you don't get the reference for this, your mother didn't read a lot of murder mysteries, did she? Um, my mother did, and there was one particular author that she liked that would uh, basically pick a letter of the alphabet and name the book after that. That was pretty much, uh, you know, A is for Arson, B is for Backstab, or something like that. Something or another, I don't know. I, I just noticed the general way that it was named. Um, with this being, uh, having Megiddo in the title, uh, title, I'm wondering if this has nothing to do with Armageddon. I don't know for sure. We will find out. Do I know anything about 7450? Hell no. Am I about to learn it? Yes. And the great thing about it is, the Vulgan, as always, is one of my favorite people to turn to for information on SCPs. Because... He gives us voice acting. He gives us the lore straight out. Exploring series really goes in depth on it. The Vulgan gives it to us straight. I love when the Vulgan really throws himself into a project. And he, you know, I know that he really, I know that he goes in depth into every project he goes to. But there's certain SCPs you can tell are his absolute favorites. And when he goes into those. Oh my god, it's it's an absolute treat. I'm hoping this is one of them. Let's find out. Warpugs, let's get into it. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Dr. Miller, and the SCP we're going to be looking at today is SCP-7450. Lovely. Containment class, Esoteric. Secondary class, Megado. What? Disruption class, Amida. And risk class, Critical. Wait a minute. I haven't heard of these before. I haven't heard of these before. What is Megiddo class? Special containment procedures. SCP-7450 is uncontained. The SCP Foundation in its current iteration no longer possesses the resources or personnel required to contain SCP-7450. It is unlikely that any third-party paranatural classification and containment organizations would, if they indeed still exist, be capable of containing SCP-7450. Due to the critical threat that SCP-7450 poses to sentient lifeforms, all Foundation personnel are subject to the requirements of the Magog protocol. The full requirements can be found on the Central Foundation data server. The pro Okay, seriously, this is a lot of biblical references. This is going to be what I expected it to be. Primary tenets are as follows. Number one, under no circumstances are any personnel permitted to leave the confines of their local Foundation site during a transience of SCP-7450. Number two, under no circumstances are any personnel permitted to travel to an area that will be in the path of an SCP-7450 transients within 72 hours. Number three, under no circumstances are any personnel permitted to look at or listen to SCP-7450. Okay. By order of the Foundation Overwatch Administrator, any personnel found to have purposely or unintentionally violated one of these requirements is subject to summary execution by any other member of the SCP Foundation. Well, damn. Adherence to these requirements is paramount to the successful continuance of the human species. It's one of these. As a result of the Foundation's inability to contain SCP-7450 and the resultant circumstances that arose following its ascension, the SCP Foundation Classification Committee has ruled 3 to 0 to update SCP-7450's containment designation from the Apollyon class to the Megado class, to distinguish between entities or anomalies that will inevitably result in the end of the world and those that already have. Description SCP-7450 is the group designation for four massive humanoid eigenweapons that ascended to godhood on the 13th of December, 2028. The ascension of SCP-7450 was predicated by the arrival of the Celestial 981 Ajax entity on October 14, 2025. What? The end product of the interaction between 981 Ajax 
and SCP-7450 was the utter annihilation of 981 Ajax and immediately following that, the rapid escalation of an XK-class end-of-the-world event caused by the cognitohazardous and catastrophic ontokinetic effects of SCP-7450's presence on Earth. SCP-7450 entities range between 18.9 kilometers and 23.5 kilometers in height. They are humanoid in appearance, with six large avian wings emerging from their upper and lower back. SCP-7450 entities have a single arm and hand on their right side, in which they carry a short curved sickle. The entities have humanoid legs which terminate at the ankles and are seemingly incapable of locomotion, instead moving by way of levitation, though the legs do move as if ambulating. Surviving descriptions of SCP-7450 indicate other possible animal characteristics such as claws, feathers on the arm and legs, serpentine tails, etc. Uh. They are named in descending order of size, Pallas, Judith, Rachel, and Argyne. I always knew that this one chick I knew named Rachel would eventually cause the termination of the human species. I was right! I was always right! Accurate depictions of their facial features are infeasible to gather. It is currently impossible to obscure images of the entity's faces to a sufficient degree to allow for visual assessment while also negating their cognitohazardous properties. Similarly, audio recordings of SCP-7450's vocalizations cannot be reviewed by sentient observers. Both human and sentient AI listeners are subject to the cognitohazards present in SCP-7450's voice. Yeah, Rachel's voice was a cognito hazard, I can admit that. Since the moment of their ascension, each of the four instances of SCP-7450 have been in constant circumnavigatory transients of the planet. Each of the four moves at slightly different speeds. Rachel is the fastest, and transits the globe once every 416 days, whereas the slowest, Pallas, completes the passage in 468 days. Okay. Sentient creatures exposed to the visage or voice of any instance of SCP-7450 will immediately become compelled to follow it in its transit of the planet. Once an individual has been affected, they are unrecoverable. Subjects who fall under the effect of SCP-7450's compulsion will make every possible effort to avoid anything that would impede their ability to join in the mass following of SCP-7450 and cannot be deterred short of total destruction of their body. Affected person- I had a feeling it was gonna be one of those. I had a feeling that it was gonna be... Just, no matter what it was gonna be, it was gonna be some end of the world type stuff. And thank you for not letting me down, cause every once in a while, you need to hear that everything's getting clapped. ...undergo changes over time to their physiology. They cease to age. Their bodies become more resistant to damage and decay, and their features slowly begin to resemble the SCP-7450 instance they follow. They will walk behind their instance of SCP-7450 until their feet wear down to their ankles, at which point they will begin levitating alongside other similar subjects. Lastly, these subjects mimic the vocalizations of SCP-7450, and while exposure to these vocalizations by non-affected persons does not have the same immediate compulsory effect as SCP-7450, they will nonetheless experience the same end condition after a short period of time. Uh -huh. Addendum 7450-1, Foundation Overseer's Address, 11-2-2025. This is a public notice from the office of the SCP Foundation Overseer Council regarding the celestial entity appearing over the South Sky on October 14th, 2025. Dated November 2nd, 2025. Good evening. My name is Armand Kachatri, an overseer of the SCP Foundation. We are an organization that seeks to categorize and contain anomalous entities and phenomena in our world. So at this point, the veil's completely shattered regardless. We have operated in secrecy for the last 200 years, maintaining our world's status quo. As of the night of the 14th, we are no longer able to maintain that veil. The entity that appeared over the southern sky, an entity we have identified as 981 Ajax, 
is a hostile extraplanar entity currently intersecting with our reality. The disaster ongoing in Johannesburg is evident of this entity's catastrophic potential. There have been many questions about the tragic footage that has made the global news these last few weeks, and the person hanging in the sky now over the city. We cannot speak with full certainty of their fate, but they are in our hearts. At this time, we are urging calm and caution. We understand you are afraid. Rest assured, we are currently cooperating with world governments and other organizations like our own to determine the best path forward. We have technology that is not available to the rest of mankind and capabilities beyond what is commonly accepted as feasible. Okay. We will, as we always have, stand as the stalwart shield between our world and the unknown. Thank you. Armin Kachatrian, 051. Well, the veil's completely off now. Addendum, 7452. Foundation Overseer's Address, 1211, 2028. Joy. This is a public notice from the office of the SCP Foundation Overseer Council regarding Ajax. Dated... December 11th, 2028. Over these past three years, myself and my predecessors have made every attempt to be as transparent as possible with you about our efforts to defend mankind against the ongoing threat of Ajax. Today, I will do the same. Okay. This will be our final communication. We have expended every possibility and all of our resources. We have broken up our containment cells and released every possible horror into the world in hopes of balancing the threat of Ajax. We have failed. Ajax will soon open its final eye, and we will not be able to delay it. In truth, we never have. Take this time to be with your families. Great. We're dead. We have preparations in place that will, God willing. Don't bring him into this. Ensure the hopeful survival of our species. These preparations are buried deep within the Earth and may survive the eyes of Ajax. Undoubly? Please pray for their survival. These last four mothers of humanity. Someday, they and their children might awaken and walk again on an Earth free from this nightmare. I wish you all peace. Good night. Reese Holsons, R51. Oh, uh, well. Addendum right. 7450 3. Personal Journal Entries 514 2032. Personal Journal. Date 514 2032. Got the news today I've been expecting for a while. Judith ended up far too east and passed over Site 43. I finally got into Site AI and got the same stream of nonsense as the others. It's not cognito hazardous itself, thankfully. I good canary to see if the place is worth visiting. Yeah. Didn't sleep well again. I've got Henderson locked up in the cell the floor below me, but sometimes he just starts howling. I need to go change out the gag I had on him. I suspect he's chewed through it. Yay. Another letter in today from Sophia. Blessings are few and far between, but they're still blessings. Says she's down to just 23, but they're still working. 23? I haven't had 23 in two years. 23 She's months. worried about us. I didn't tell her about Henderson. But I told her it's still too dangerous to come over here. Rachel is crossing in three weeks, and we might catch Judith if she straightens back out. There are still some stragglers up there, too. Ones who haven't caught up with the floaters. Maybe in a few months. We'll see. Okay. It's agonizing, though. It's been a long few months. I thought at first having Henderson's voice would be enough to keep me sane. But since I snipped him, he doesn't sound much like a person anyway. And even then, he's not saying anything that would be a comfort. Just shrieking and gnashing his teeth. Seeing another person would be nice. 6-3-2032 Personal journal. Date, 6-3-2032. We're holed up tight this week. Rachel's passing right now. The last week, Henderson has been frothing at the mouth. Probably because she's the one who turned him. Yeah. I scoped him out a week before last, just to make sure he was still good and tied up in there. Cell was a mess. 
He got out of his straps at some point and started scratching at the walls. He made decent progress, and he turned his hands into stumps. Uh. Maybe he thinks he'll be floating around on his wrists. Sound cancellation is still holding up. When we lost Site 8, they were about 16 meters down, lower than us. And Pal has still got all of them. That was a close call. I was on the phone with Harold Bates, and he just starts crying. I threw it across the room, and stayed out of there for a week. When I came back, the phone was still on. Total silence at the other end. Uh, but no. all this time buried down here has given me time to work. I found another one of the training satellites we used to use. It won't give us much coverage. It's only got two working cameras, but we might be able to get eyes on Argyne. Haven't seen really? her since she passed Tokyo last year and went into the ocean. Imagine you come up with Godzilla and you get wiped out by something called Argyne. That's just, yeah. Computer keeps reminding me to check my update request. Last time there were eight sites reporting back. I know there are probably more than that. But even thinking about opening that file makes me feel clammy. Need to think about more productive things. I'll, I'll check the update requests tomorrow. 6-4-2032 Personal journal. Date 6-4-2032 Only three sites updating. Oh, that sucks. I shouldn't have checked. Rachel is taking her fucking time. 729-2032 Personal journal. Date 729-2032 I let Henderson out earlier. I don't think there's anything left to learn from him, and he was a nice enough guy. He's got a lot of walking to do until he catches up with one of them, but he seemed happier. There you go. Be Riding free, Henderson. Screaming, be free. But in a more pleasant way. First time I've been outside in a while. It was really nice out. Sun was shining, and it's starting to warm back up again. Sky was mostly clear. If I had to guess, most of whatever was left of Ajax has his atmosphere by now. Might be some left up there, but I didn't see any. After I came back inside, I just sat around a little. I've been trying to keep busy, but I, I don't feel like it today. Don't blame you, buddy. Haven't heard from Sophia in a while. Thank God for Alto. Still sending me his daily updates. A uh, picture of his face once a day. Every day. Not exciting, but... It's something. True. No news is not necessarily good news. At all. 9-2-2032 Personal journal. 9-2-2032 Still nothing from Sophia. 12-14-2032 Personal journal. Date 12-14-2032 Four-year anniversary. Nobody responding to update requests anymore. We must be getting near the close. I went back and read the rest of this file. Hilariously abridged. We had such high hopes in the beginning. And then, nothing. Planning committees and emails of encouragement. We made it out better than most. That first day they started crying out, we couldn't hear it from so deep underground. 64 sites. 47,000 personnel. Why did it take us so long to learn how to stay alive? It usually happens We're paying like a that. price for Ajax. Ajax. What's the point of the secrecy now? Yeah. What's the point of the updates and the status reports? Who's left to read this? I'll tell you what happened. If you're reading this, then you're whoever is left than me. There aren't many of us now, if any at all. Maybe it'll be Alto. In 1996, we buried four girls at four different deep well sites. Why? A preparation for the end of the world. They'd had a close call with 239 and wanted to make sure they had a contingency plan. This is before we found 2000, so it became moot after that point. The project was more or less scrapped, but they didn't dig those girls up. Good game. I wonder sometimes if there was ever a meeting about it, or if they just forgot they were there. Anyway, they were buried under a mountain of sorcery and technology and given wombs that would operate for a thousand years. 
For three decades, they were down there, until Ajax showed up and turned 2000 into a smoking wreck. Suddenly, we need another option. And look at that. Kane finds those four girls and starts the machines up again, and we have our parachute again. But then, Armand tells the entire world about them as he's letting everyone know that we're going to die. All our best laid plans, all our world religions, suddenly only one thing mattered. Mankind had seen us calling real nightmares up from the bowels of the earth, powers they had never dreamed of, and suddenly we're telling them that it's all over. Uh -huh. Except, wait, there are these four girls who can save us. What did we think was going to happen? Had we really not learned about what belief does? So they woke up, and that was it. Eight billion humans crying out for a god to save them. Eight billion humans screaming, crying, begging. Our city walls fallen and our idols smashed against the ground. Ajax. <laughs> I don't even remember what Ajax looked like, to be honest. Preparing to open his last eye, and people were afraid. We lamented our shared fate, and our gods woke up. But they weren't built to be divine. They didn't know what was going to happen to them. The Foundation found them on a street corner oh, somewhere, cleaned them Lord. up, put ten billion dollars of tech into them, and then sent them to bed. When they woke up, they were gods. They were thirteen years old. Eight hours. We had eight hours, Alto. Eight hours to plan before Payless cracked open her mouth and began screaming. Were they scared too? Were they afraid of what they'd become? Their first action was a reaction. I'm sure of it. Ajax came at them and they scattered it across the atmosphere. Their next action was fear. Gods need worship and worshippers. It didn't take long. They blew through our cognito hazard defenses in seconds, like rice paper before a blowtorch. And now it's been four years. Half of us we lost to the sisters, another third to exhaustion. <sighs> Tired, scared, defeated. They would put down their work, walk out the door, and then wait for a sister to come calling. Oh. I don't know what the point of this was. I don't know what we accomplished here. Did we succeed in our mission? Did we plan enough? Do we still have work to do? Did we ensure the survival of our species? I don't know. I'm tired too. <laughs> we wept when skies opened up and Ajax opened its first eye. And all the eyes afterwards. We lamented our grim misfortune and prayed for an end to our suffering. There you go. Why haven't I gotten the message yet? There's there's nobody left to lament but me. 9 1 2035. Personal journal. Date 9-1-2035. I hope it was easy for you, Sophia. I hope you found something like a new life out there. I won't be far behind. Bye, bro. 4-19-2036. Yeah. Personal journal. Date 4-19-2036. My last journal entry. Out of food and... The water doesn't work anymore. Palis is getting close, but I can't wait any longer. I'll die down here if I don't leave. I can make it to Site 89 and then to Site 104. They'll have resources I can use, and maybe research I overlooked. If Palis catches me, then that's the ball game. I'm not willing to give up yet, but I can't wager the survival of our species against goggles that might slip. Or earplugs that don't work the way they should. <laughs> I thought burning out my eardrums would be the hard part, but with the benefit of hindsight, I should have foreseen how bad it would be to take my own eyes out. Hindsight. <laughs> A dark joke. <laughs> yeah. I never truly appreciated the dark until now. Good God, all right. I spent too much time on this dumb shit to give up now. I don't care if, if it takes... A life living in darkness. I'll, I'll figure this out. Hmm. And if you ever get around to reading this, Alto, <laughs> you can kindly go fuck yourself. 
two years, you had my heart leaping the side of a cardboard cutout. Motherfucker. What is this in reference oh, to? Cry. What? what is this in reference to? Wish me luck. Troy. Thank you for listening. If indeed you still are, and you are all dismissed. Yay! Goodbye. DJ Cox and DJ, C- DJ Cactus. Why am I not surprised? Why am I not surprised? Oh my god. I told you guys, if you haven't experienced the Vulgan yet, now you know. This is the reason I love this stuff so much. This was... Yeah. I have no words. I have no mouth yet. I must scream. The guy put out his own eyes and ears to avoid the thing taking him. And this was all the SCP Foundation's fault. Uh, yeah, she's screaming at a game right now. That's great. Um, so it was once again the SCP Foundation's fault. Excuse me, one second. Hold on, hold on. I love that woman, but volume control is not her strong suit. Okay, so... This was... F- While I expected something like this, I didn't expect this. I thought that this was going to be something about... Um, well, a lot of... a lot of bi- There was a lot of biblical references, but at the same time, now I understand. Megiddo um, basically means Armageddon, and it's appropriate for this particular SCP. Um, I didn't know what the object class was before this. Um, I had never, I don't think I've heard of this before, but I am glad I now know. This is what I was talking about with the Vulcan as a voice actor. Once again, expertly portrayed. This is the kind of stuff that I wait for, that I like to see. So I know that he... he, I really enjoy when he throws himself into a role. He does so well. He's done this for years. And it's been impressive every single time. Guys... If you have not subscribed to the Vulcan, you're doing yourself a disservice by not doing so. Aside from all that, I'm going to wrap up here for myself. One of these days, I'm going to get back to making SCP lore videos. One of these days. I was only able to do, I think, three tops. Yeah, I think I was only able to do three. But um, one of these days, I hope to get back into it. My time is never my own. That's the one pain of the life I lead right now is my time is never my own. And you pay for it. You, you pay for it one way or the other. That's why I have, I have a bunch of scripts sitting out right now that have not been recorded yet, that they're finished. And that's why I continue writing things and making plans at this point that I can't ever seem to get fulfilled. Sooner or later, though, I will have that time, and I can't wait for that, because there's so much stuff that I want to do that I just simply don't have the time to do. And I can't wait to have that time. Until then, guys, thank you for joining me. Thank you for spending some time with me. All my links are going to be in the description down below, right next to the Vulgans. This was outstanding, and I will catch you guys next time. Just don't pay attention to the screaming. How come everything that involves sound... No. And I do not recognize the bodies of the water no matter what you say.